Hello everyone and welcome to Imperator Realm. I'm Lord Formant and here we are going over a tribal economy. Um, if you haven't seen a general economy guide, go check out my other one where I show you as Judea. Um, that will teach you more about trade routes and stuff. But I have a lot of questions from people about a tribal economy in general. So tribes are obviously going to be poorer than civilized nations, but they also have other benefits. The big benefit is they have tribesmen who provide a fair amount of tax and manpower and in general are better than both slaves and freemen, um, but you can only have them as a tribal nation. So how do you increase your um, income as a tribal nation? Well, it's similar to how you do as a civilized nation. You want trade routes. The problem is most of the nations around you are going to have no trade goods to trade. This is easier if you're somewhere in Iberia and you border Carthage or you're near Rome or you're over here. Um, suffice to say that's the way to make the most money, but there are other ways to make money and I'm going to go into some of that. Obviously, I'll point this out again. If you want to make more money from trade, you want to go down here, trade, change your neutral stance to a mercantile one. It'll give you more commerce income and it'll make people like you and more likely to trade with you. So, um, I neglected to mention this in my Judea guide video, so I will mention it again here. Under the government, your civics ideas, you have some pretty good ones that give you income. Um, most, some governments don't have civic idea slots, and you obviously want to match them if you can. Um, but right here, you can get 20% extra commerce income, you can get 20% slave output, citizen output, extra imports, routes, and stuff. So there are quite a few um, beneficial ones you may want to consider. This one right here, provincial import routes, applies to all your provinces. You put that on, all your provinces gain extra stuff. So for tribes, how to make income? Well, we'll ignore that. The easiest way to do it as a tribe is to construct tribal settlements. It's really that simple. Tribes are much easier to maintain an economy than a civilized nation. However, you're going to have less citizens and less population probably so you're going to be producing less income overall but then again you don't have legions you're not going to have as many forts to defend so it's a trade-off suffice to say tribal settlement gives you plus 30 output from your population if we clicked on a population here da -da -da -da, right now there's almost no income from these settlements but right here is a good one 13 percent tax income adding a tribal settlement here although there's a fort um, would give 30 percent more of that it's pretty simple. Um, other things you should be aware of are decreasing your maintenance. You can, of course, up your uh, taxes and commerce stuff, but really the commerce that gives you more import routes is probably more valuable than importing and exporting. Your army maintenance, you should always have that to nothing, especially if you don't have a standing army or you don't have legions. You can also mothball your forts. Um, you got a lot of benefits doesn't fully mothball your fort, but it does decrease the cost. Outside of that, if you want to make money as a tribe, you want to try and get a city going almost as quickly as possible. Um, and then you want to probably start focusing on becoming a civilized nation. Um, but if you're not doing that, tax offices, mills, and marketplaces are good. The, the interesting thing about uh, tribes is that they do have slaves. Um, and they actually have all the population, but they're going to have more tribesmen. But it does mean you can focus into slaves. And uh, a lot of your tribesmen, if you boost, if you put mills in your cities and you boost them up, a good portion of your tribesmen will turn into slaves, which, since it's a demotion, happens relatively quickly. And uh, because it's only one step away, it's not like trying to make a noble into a slave. Um, it's pretty efficient to do it. The other benefit of trying to get at least one city, as you'll see, um, I was trying to show you, but I was a little delayed. All these migrations, these are populations that are going to move to your settlements. And once they're there, they'll be promoted or uh, demoted into uh, different stuff. As you can see, 5% a month to a freeman, 2% a month here to a slave. And it, it will go back and forth, and this will adjust... Suffice to say, tribesmen, although they give you good benefits early on for income, they become less beneficial as the game goes on. However, there are ways to boost this in the tribal government. The first one right here is um, 
under the positive centralization. For those of you who don't know tribes, the right side is to centralize and become a civilization. The left is to become decentralized and stay basically as a giant tribal nation. The first one here, the barter economy statutes gives plus 20% commerce income, which obviously will help quite a bit. Um, down here, formalized agriculture, slaves needed for surplus is very good. However, you're probably gonna want hill fort, which gets more tribe output while you have it. Um, this one right here, pop promotion can help if you wanna turn tribesmen into freemen or others to get benefits from them. And then down here, rights of birth. If you put this on desired freeman ratio, you will get more freemen, which will provide more taxes. Um, for those of you who didn't watch my other video, you can see what a pop provides for output. Each pop provides different amounts of output based off how many of them you have. You can find out that by kind of hovering over it. It's not really that easy to understand, but suffice to say we have five pop slave pops here. They provide 0.06 tax. We have 17 tribesmen. They provide 0.09 tax. As you can see, tribesmen are much less beneficial for tax than slaves are, but they do provide more manpower. And freemen over here are the worst. They provide very low base tax and less manpower um, than tri tribesmen, but they provide more than slaves, which provide no manpower. So you got to kind of balance it out. This gives you the breakdown of what they're providing. Suffice to say, tribesmen are actually really good at producing tax, but as the game goes on, commerce is going to be more valuable. So you kind of want to move towards commerce. Obviously, set up your trade routes, have them auto running, stuff like that. On the decentralized trade, because I should go over this, you have property ownership, gives 12% tribesmen output. That's 12% to all your tax and uh, population, which is nice. You also have the common good, 10% tax increase. Um, this will provide you more manpower, this will provide you more money, and you can keep going down here. Obviously, you get happiness bonuses and assimilation stuff, which is useful. Down here, the rightful dominion enslavement efficiency and slave output. The biggest way of increasing slaves in your game are raiding other people's territory and basically kidnapping their populations to bring them back as slaves. You'll see whenever you sack a city or something, you'll get that. Um, this would increase the amount you get and increase the amount of money you get from slaves. So that's basically it. Obviously there are innovations and stuff that will help you. Sad to say, you're not gonna get any tech really as a tribe, so try and move to a civilized nation quickly or if you're not going to go that race down the um, decentralized and get to some of these more beneficial ones at the bottom than the top ones. Another thing to point out is the more happy your population is, the more output they will provide. And if they're unhappy, they won't provide any output at all. So you want to try and keep people happy, which makes stuff like unintegrated cultural group happiness, 12%, very useful. So that is a quick guide on tribes and tribal economy. It's much more simplified than a civilized economy, but there are still some nuances to it. So hopefully that will help you guys understanding how to build a tribe economy. That will be it from me. Check out my other guides. I did one obviously on civilized. I'm gonna do some other guides on base mechanics since most people are new to the new Marius patch and this will help them. So hopefully I will see you guys all then. Please like, subscribe and comment and I'll see you all in another video. Bye for now.